So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the differences between the Tinko Rally 1.8 scale buggy platform and the two Armor 1.8 scale buggy platforms. Now these two brands have been duking it out for a little while now, so I figured it was time to put them all side by side and I can show you the differences between all three cars and hopefully squash any misleading or false information that's been floating around on socials. Now before we start comparing these three cars, I do want to point something out really quickly because I know that I'm probably going to be asked about this in the comments and that is of course in regards to the Python. Now of course I don't have the room to put all four cars here, but for those of you that don't know, the Python and the Radix are actually the exact same car with just different bodies and of course the Radix has different tires as well. Now of course Tinkerelli have done this on purpose and they are not the first ones to do this type of thing rather than offering the Python, which was the original car that they released in a variety of different colors, they're actually giving us different bodies. And that's not uncommon. Lots of companies have done this, uh, some more modern companies, some more older traditional companies. If you go back to the 80s and 90s, uh, and even more recently, Tamiya are very guilty of doing this sort of thing with a lot of their platforms. Uh, T-Brand have done that as well with the TRX4 and the Stampede two-wheel drive. And even Armour are guilty of doing it with the Nero platform where they had the standard Nero, the Phazon, and then they had the Big Rock as well. And of course now, um, Team Corelli have done this with the Python and the Radix 6. And they've also done it with their Truggy version, uh, which is the Shogun. They've recently released the Morocco, I think it's called, I think it's pronounced. So it's just the same car with a different body and it just gives people options. So if you don't like one style of car or one color, you can switch it out for something else. And that's a really cool thing. And uh, I kind of wish that more companies would do that as well because uh, yeah, just having the same car with the different colors can appeal to some people, but having different bodies, hey, why not? I think it helps everybody, just gives everyone more options to choose from. So now that we're ready to start comparing these guys, let's get into round one because round one is gonna be talking about the sizes and the body differences between all three vehicles. Now, believe it or not, when it comes to the sizes, all three cars are all pretty much the same. Even though the Typhon 3S is actually based on a 10 scale platform, that platform happens to be a short course truck, which is the Senton. Now, for those of you that don't know, standard 10 scale short course trucks actually have the same wheelbase as a standard 1.8 scale buggy. So it was really easy for Armour to convert the Senton into a Typhon. All they had to do was obviously get the right length arm so that the car is just as wide as a standard 1.8 scale car, come up with the front and rear bumper and the rear wing mount. And then of course they modeled the body uh, after the 6S Typhon uh, but of course that's a little bit different, it's not quite the same body. And hey presto, uh, you've got yourself a 3S 1.8 scale buggy that's obviously a lot lighter and almost as fast as these two as well. So uh, good on them for doing that. Now as far as the rest of the bodies go, um, you, know, you can see that the Typhon 3S and the Typhon 6S do look very similar, however they're not interchangeable. You can probably modify the 6S body to fit on the 3S car, uh, but you got to take note that there are two mounting positions here on the 3S Typhon and two at the back. And of course, you've only got one here for the 6S and two at the back there. Now, this body is actually narrower than this one. And I can show you here very quickly if I grab this guy and grab this guy, you'll be able to see uh, kind of the differences there. So this one will actually fit inside uh, the 6S Typhon by quite a fair bit. So there's quite a fair bit of difference there between those two bodies. So they're not entirely interchangeable. Uh, and then of course the styling of the cars uh, when you're comparing it to the Team Co Rally cars. Well, when it comes to the to the Python versus the Typhon, I know that a lot of people say that these bodies were actually quite similar and that you know Team Co Rally were copying armor and so forth. Well, I don't know, maybe the silhouette might look somewhat similar but there's actually quite enough difference here uh, to set these two apart. The Tinko Rally car, as, as you can see, is actually quite wide as well, so quite a fair bit different. Uh, you've got holes on the back of this one, you've got vents on the back of this one. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's that pretty much settles that argument. That has more of an upright fin at the back there, so it has more of a spoiler sort of look to it. This one, uh, 
it's more flat and it actually concaves in to, mat, to uh, mount to the actual body mount there. So that is the difference between those two. And then of course, when you compare it to the, to the Radix, so I can grab this here without dropping it, you can see that there is a significant difference there. Now, uh, this one is not as uh, curved as the uh, Python and Typhon cars. It's got some more square edges to it. Uh, still very wide as well. No vents on the back of this one, which I find it's an interesting thing because there's vents on the Python, but not on the Radix. I guess maybe there's more airflow coming through this one somehow because it's different. Or maybe they just didn't bother. They figured maybe the vents were a bit overkill and were not really necessary. But um, if you pay close attention, there are some indentations on the front of this body just here. So you could probably Dremel some of this out if you want to uh, had, have some vents and there's nothing stopping you from, you know, maybe uh, Dremeling out the little back section here and getting some airflow coming out through there as well. So there's definitely the opportunity to vent uh, the body if you want to, but it doesn't come vented out of the factory. Uh, so I think that pretty much settles that as far as bodies go. Let's move on to round two. <laughs> So moving on to round two, we're going to be talking about suspension and steering. And of course, the other one out here is the Typhon 3S because it is based on the 10 scale platform. A lot of what we're going to see here is very different to the other two cars. We've got plastic shock towers, plastic shocks, and even the drive shafts are actually plastic as well. Shock shafts on this guy are only three millimeters thick, and our steering assembly is kind of a caster block and steering knuckle type of setup. So very different to the other two cars, no real comparison. So we can eliminate this guy this round and come back to it in the next round. So let's quickly reposition these two and get them ready for battle because there are uh, a lot of differences between them, but there's also quite a number of similarities. So when you look at the front end of these cars for the untrained eye, you might think, oh geez, these are pretty much identical. But as I said, there's a lot of things here that are quite subtle that really set these two apart. Starting off with the shocks, for example, both shocks are 16 millimeter big boss shocks. They both have threaded bodies. They both have aluminum shock caps, but Team Car Rally have got a slightly longer shock because it sits upright a little bit more, while Armour have got a slightly shorter shock because they lay them down a little bit more. Also, Armour's shock have a four millimeter shock shaft and Team Car Rally have a three and a half millimeter shock shaft. So I guess we can give a point to armor here uh, with the shocks because they do look a little bit beefier and they also have these little caps on top here to protect uh, the, the top of the shock, which is nice. Uh, moving on to the shock tower itself, this is a five millimeter pressed aluminum shock tower. Tim Corelli look to have a machined aluminum uh, four millimeter shock tower. If it's not machined, it's definitely finished a hell of a lot nicer. I definitely prefer that the look of that shock tower. Uh, of course, it is a millimeter thinner than the armor one, but when you look at the finish on the armor shock tower, it does look a, a little bit rough uh, compared to something like that. Not that it really plays a huge part, you know, the looks of it doesn't play a part in the performance of it, but when you put it next to that, I, th I think I'm going to give a point to the shock tower on the Tim Co Rally. Now, something that's a little bit hard to convey on camera, but I'll try and give you a little bit of a, a little bit of B-roll just so you can see the differences. The um, uh, shock tower on the armor seems to sit upright a little bit more whilst the Tim Co Rally one seems to lean back a little bit more. So a slightly different geometry going on there as far as the way that the shocks work and the suspension work on both cars. Uh, moving down, we've got the sway bar. Now the sway bar uh, on the armor car has a fair amount of movement from left to right. There's really not much movement, maybe a millimeter on the Tim Co Rally sway bar. I really don't know if that it plays a part in performance or durability or anything like that. Um, but you know, the fact that this one doesn't move as much, I'll probably give a point to the Team Co Rally for the way that they finished that off. Uh, moving further down, we've got the front bumpers. Uh, Team Co Rally got a really beefy bumper there on the front, nice, big, very proud. And the armor is still using a very tiny bumper that I think is still the same one as it was on the V1s. So again, I'm gonna give a point to the Team Co Rally car on this one. Uh, moving on to the drive shafts. Uh, the drive shafts on this guy are four millimeters thick. On the armor car, they are five millimeters thick. Clear winner here, the armor gets the, the point for the drive shafts. Um, the arms, the lower arms. Now there's pros and cons on the design of these lower arms. I like the finish of the Team Co Rally arm. Uh, I also like the fact that they have slightly more meat on the front here uh, as opposed to the armor car. And I like the fact that they've used an aluminum washer to set the camber on the front end of the car as opposed to the uh, flimsy sort of plastic one 
uh, that Armour have had pretty much since day one. Uh, however, I do like the pin system that Armour have implemented with their shocks. So it's basically a pin that goes through, there's a screw on top that holds the pin in place whilst Tim Carell is still using a screw at the front. Now they may, that may not really matter to a lot of people, but I know that you know having a screw head at the front end of the uh, of the arm, it's going to get a lot of dirt, especially if you're racing against other people, uh, and that's going to get clogged up. It's going to be really hard to sort of service your shocks, um, and you know that that screw could get damaged, and then it's really hard to sort of access that uh, particular part. So uh, I'll give the design to to the pin for armor, but I like the uh, the aluminium washer and the the media. Uh, sort of a front arm here on the front end of this arm as opposed to the armor uh, version now I've not n never really broken an armor a arm as far as I can remember so it's not that it's this is a weak point um, but you know that's obviously being beefed up a little bit more than this one has so I'll have to give a point to that guy um, the steering knuckle assembly. You might think that these guys have kind of copied each other or one copied the other, but that's not the case at all. There are, you know, just like the Typhon 3S, there's a the caster block type of setup, and then there's this, which is the pillow ball type of setup. And this has been used by a variety of other brands out there prior to both of these cars existing on the market. You look at Team Associated, X-Ray, and various other brands out there, uh, they've been using this particular type of pillow ball setup. So one brand didn't copy the other, nothing here. It's just their version of it. Uh, and I will say there are some subtle differences in the way that these guys have done it. Uh, so they both have a little aluminium arm that comes off the actual steering knuckle. Uh, Armour's one is red, the Tim Carelli one is um, black. Armour's one has the uh, steering link uh, above the actual little uh, red arm, whilst uh, Tim Carelli have got it underneath the arm. Uh, as you look at the bearings here, the armor bearing is actually surrounding the thicker part of their axle, so right at the very beginning, and the bearing is kind of flush with the knuckle, whilst Tim Corelli have gone for a slightly different design, and the bearing is kind of buried inside. So a much smaller bearing, and uh, it's actually sitting inside behind the, uh, the, the fat part of the axle there. So a little bit different in that regard. The upper A-arm is also different between both cars. Uh, Team Corelli have got a flatter arm with a bit of a brace in between. Armour have got a little bit of a bend on the top of the arm and there's no brace in between here. So, uh, slightly different design. Now, I will say this. I like the way that Armour have finished the, their plastics a little bit better. So, uh, on the seams and everything, the way that the, the plastics are done, the seams are being cleaned up a little bit nicer on the Armour car. Whilst on the Team Co Rally car, it still feels a little rough. It kind of feels like I still have to go with an X-Acto knife to really clean up those seams and make them completely flat. So, probably something that Team Co Rally can improve in the future. But that is a minor thing that may not have any sort of effect on performance or durability of those arms, just something to keep in mind there. Team Corelli are using a fixed steering link, whilst Armour are using an adjustable steering link. Now, Team Corelli did have adjustable steering links um, originally on the V1s, but they switched out to fixed. And I understand their logic. They've gone from, well, you know, why are people adjusting this sort of stuff on a basher? Uh, just put them fixed, set the, uh, the toe out on the car, and hey presto, you don't have anything to worry about. Because a lot of people are just gonna take these cars out of the box, put some batteries in, and go find the biggest ramp that they can find and send these things to the moon. So there's no, there's no real need to really start adjusting a toe or anything like that. These cars, not a lot of them are gonna make it to the racetrack. It's more like the Bash Park or the BMX track or what have you. Now, Armour are using adjustable steering links, which is a great thing, but what that means is that people can mess that up. That being said, it does give you the option to hit the track with this guy if you want to be a little bit competitive and you can adjust and you know muck around with the steering and all that sort of thing by adjusting uh, those links. So there's pros and cons with both of them. Um, I think that that's pretty much a tie. Now depending on which side of the fence you're sitting on, if you don't care for the adjustable steering links, then you're probably going to favor that because there's less things for you to mess up. But if you like messing around with that, then obviously you're going to favor this one. So I don't think there's a clear winner here, it's really just personal preference. Now for round three, we're gonna be talking about chassis and wing mounts. And as you can see, 
there's probably a couple of differences here. Now, of course, the Typhon uh, 6S has been used quite a bit, so it's probably a bit hard to tell where the aluminium finishes and the plastic starts. But you can definitely see here on the uh, Tinker Rally the differences between the plastic and the aluminium. And then, of course, the Typhon 3S is all plastic. So we'll start with that guy. Now, this is a plastic tub chassis. There's no aluminium in here at all. Now, you might think that this is actually a weak spot on the car, but given that it is designed to be lightweight, hence the reason why it can run only on you know, 2S and 3S, it actually works in its favor. So, and it's pretty strong. I mean, I've abused this car quite a lot, as you can probably tell by what looks like it's been sandblasted on, underneath here. And the, uh, the car has actually held up very nicely. Now, as far as the uh, wing mount goes, this guy starts on the body post just here and kind of goes over the shock tower and then comes to a really nice sturdy mount on the back here. I actually really like the way that the uh, armor have done this. It does have a little bit of a bumper here, but I must say the bumper should probably stick out a little bit more. I mean, it looks good, but it really doesn't do much of a job because, uh, yeah, either the wing mount or the uh, the bottom half of the uh, of the bumper here is the one that's going to hit the ground first. So, I suppose the only thing that this wing mount can't do compared to the other two is that it can't be height adjusted, and you can't actually tilt the wing either. So it's pretty fixed, but very sturdy. I really haven't heard of anybody sort of breaking a wing mount on these cars, to be honest. So uh, I think this car's actually done pretty well in this round. Now moving on to the other two, and I'll spread them out a little bit just so we can have a bit of a better look at them. So we'll start with the Team Co Rally. The chassis on this guy, um, aluminium, and as you can probably tell, uh, there's probably more plastic on either side of the chassis here as, the, as opposed to the armor, where there's more alloy, less plastic. So they're both three millimeter stick. They're both finished really nicely. When it's brand new, it looks just like this on the armor as well. Uh, I suppose the only difference nowadays is that the, because this is an arm uh, Typhon V4, the new V5s have a little bit of a ridge on the back of the chassis here, kind of to stiffen it up a little bit and prevent some of that bending that we seem to experience, uh, you know, when we're sending these things to the moon all the time. So, um, Tim Carelli haven't done anything like that. They're still sort of relying on the chassis braces and everything else uh, to keep the, the chassis in check. As for the wing mount, I think uh, Tim Carelli's design is probably a little bit better than Armour's in my opinion. Uh, it has this cross section going through here. And this wing mount is actually a little bit beefier than the V1 in the uh, the, the Python that I've got. So um, this they've actually improved this wing mount a little bit. So if you've got one of these Tim Corelli buggies and you've got the V1 Python and you want a, string, a stronger wing mount, this is definitely the one to get. So they've beefed up around here. They've also beefed up this like inner brace that's on here that goes across the top. And then one of the really good things about this wing mount is that you can actually adjust the height of the wing as well as the tilt of the wing, which is really cool. So um, Tim Corelli, I think I've done a pretty good job on that one. Um, as for the armor, as I said, a little bit more alloy. So the, it's a wider chassis with a little bit less plastic on either side. And then for the wing mount, They've kind of gone for more of a flatter design. So the wing mount itself is a little bit flatter because this car is advertised as a, uh, as a speed buggy. So I guess they've decided to sort of lower the wing a little bit. You can see that it kind of sits below the actual shock tower. Uh, it does have a little bit of adjustment. So you can see there, there's a couple of holes just hidden under here. So you can definitely adjust both the height and a little bit of a tilt on the wing as well but it doesn't really kick up like a, you know, a traditional wing on a buggy does. So a little bit different, still very good, uh, but I do believe that you know, given that so many people break these wing mounts, they probably could address that in some, at some stage. Now, I will say that the, uh, the wing on the 6S Typhon is uh, shorter this way, but it is a little bit wider this way, whilst the Tim Coe Rally is a little bit longer, but narrower this way. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. All right, let's move on to the next one. So moving on to the final round, we have the overall chassis layout. And as you can see, I've got the bodies off and I've kept the cars in the same position as before so nobody gets confused. We've got the Typhon 6S over here. We've got the Radix 6 in the center and the Typhon 3S over in the corner. So we'll grab this one first because uh, as I've been saying throughout this video, it is the different, you know, the one that's different from the other two. It's the Black Sheep of the family. And of course, as you can see, the chassis is a uh, plastic tub chassis. Uh, it's all one piece as well. Uh, over here on the front, we have our upside down servo, which is uh, you know kind of crossways on the chassis. We have a very generous size receiver box over here. We have the ESC that I've mounted directly on the chassis. 
We have our motor which is facing towards the rear of the car and of course that's meshed up to a slipper clutch, not a center diff. Um, and uh, that pretty much drives the center drive shaft that you see here, which is telescopic as well. So this actually uh, kind of spring loads into itself in case there's any flex on the chassis. Now I will say one thing that the, the uh, ESC originally came mounted on the receiver box. And you can see that I've still got the screws here just to kind of seal it off. Because if I take those screws off, then the, the, the cover is actually not waterproof anymore. Um, and I've actually mounted my ESC directly onto the chassis. Now you'll notice that the screws are directly onto the chassis there on either side of the ESC. And that's because uh, Armour actually provides the screws for you to actually mount the ESC onto the chassis. I mounted it there because it was kind of interfering with the body, kind of, you know, it stood up a little bit high here. So I mounted there and uh, it kind of looks good, it works for me, so I'm happy with that. All right, so that's pretty much the Typhon 3S. Let's move on to the other two, uh, which I'm sure is what we are all here to see. So these guys here, uh, I know a lot of people have been arguing online saying that, uh, you know, Tim Corelli copied armor and all of this stuff. Um, but it's not really the case. I mean, if you look at the overall layout of these cars and how everything's kind of positioned, uh, the chassis layout's very different. And then hopefully up to this stage, you can actually pinpoint some of the differences um, that this is not a carbon copy of this as a lot of people have been saying. Now, I will say this before we get stuck into this, that yes, Team Corelli have had a play on words, uh, you know, bringing out the Python, which is obviously a bit of a dig at the Typhon, the Kronos, which kind of sounds a little bit like Creighton. Uh, we got the the, no, the Mentor, sorry, the Mentor, which is uh, doesn't really match the name, but the shape of that body is very similar to the Notorious. And then got, of course you got the Shogun. Now the Shogun doesn't really look or sound like any of the other cars, but essentially you have a buggy, a monster truck, a stunt truck, and a truggy, which is what, um, you know, armor have in their lineup. So, Team Corelli have obviously come out to compete against those cars. Now, bringing out a competitor to those, a competitor to those cars doesn't necessarily mean that they're copying them. I mean, you can't expect somebody to bring out a sports car and then have an opposing company come out with a tractor and say, hey, we're competing against you. But because we didn't want to come off as copying you, we didn't bring out a sports car, we brought out a tractor. Like, it doesn't make sense. So, for them, for Tim Carrello to compete with Armour, they wouldn't bring out a crawler, right? So they had to bring out something that was similar but different. And essentially, that's what they've done. So, moving on, uh, the Armour car. Now, this is one that I know a lot of people have seen. Some of you probably own this car. You already know everything you need to know about the chassis layout of this. We've got the battery tray over here, which doesn't have a lip on the back, which means the battery can be as long as you want it to be, as long as it doesn't interfere with the uh, rear swing arm over there. Uh, the long Velcro strap, there's a Velcro strap that obviously runs long ways on the battery. So uh, that holds the battery in place and pushes it towards the front. There's a, a little slider kind of lip here that holds and boxes the, the battery into place. And then there's another uh, Velcro strap, a smaller one that kind of goes across the battery and stops that from sort of popping up as well. There's also some uh, little slots back here, which is for your balance leads. Um, although I, I would have preferred if they'd done these a little bit taller, which may, would have made it a little bit easier to access. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, Armour couldn't do that for us. Uh, receiver boxes at the front. Now this one being a V4, it's probably different from the current V5. I know that when I got my um, EXB Creighton, uh, the receiver box was different. It kind of contoured around. You kind of follow the shape of the chassis a little bit better while this one's just straight out square. So, you know, your V5 might be a bit different. But over here, everything's pretty much the same. We have a servo. Now the servo and the V5s are different, but uh, they're still in the same position. The ESC, again, the V5s are different. They're using a Spectrum ESC, but the position's the same. And the same thing goes for the motor. So the motor's rear, uh, really rearward, I should say. It's off center on the chassis. It's really towards the back and then faces forward matched up to a center diff and you can see as i move my cables out of the way you can see the um get out okay <laughs> you can see the center drive line is not exactly straight it's a little bit off center and this is normal this is not a negative point i'm just pointing it out essentially this is not a bad thing uh, but it's just a little bit off center and i'm making a point of this because you'll see the difference in the tinko rally car in a second 
So uh, Armour did put a little bit of a lip here to kind of protect any cabling or anything like that from sort of rubbing on the pinion, which is a really good idea, uh, but they didn't close that off at all. So they've left that open. I think that this lip could be a little bit wider as well, just to add a little bit of more protection. But aside from that, there's really no points to the duct here. Armour have been doing this for a long time. It's a good layout. Uh, it is a bit of a pain for when you want to replace a servo. You got to take the ESC mounting plate off. You got to disassemble a few things. Um, but aside from that, it's a very good layout, well proven, um, and uh, you know, good on them for, for doing what they have done. Now, this is not an original lay layout, of course. Uh, there are other buggies out there that have very similar layout to this. Uh, so now we move on to the Team Co Rally car, and. Uh, you might see some differences pretty much straight away. So first and foremost, our battery is over here. There's no receiver on this side. Uh, the battery is limited in size as opposed to the armor car. So it does have a lip on the front and the rear. And of course that's backed up by the ESC, which is mounted on this side of the car, not in between the servo and the motor as it is on the armor. So uh, the ESC is all the way back here. I would like to see the uh, ESC mounted a bit further back to allow a bit more room for bigger batteries. I think that would be something that I would really like to see Tim Corelli address in the future. Uh, but aside from that, you've only got two massive ba uh, Velcro straps to kind of hold the battery into place. As we move, move over to the other side, you might see the actual drive line here. I might actually bring this up a bit closer to the, to the camera. So you can see the drive line there is actually quite considerably off center as opposed to the armor car. Uh, they have moved the battery and the ESC pretty much hard up against the center chassis braces. So you can see there's quite a bit of room over here on this side. So they've moved everything a bit over, which means the center diff had to shift over a little bit. Um, and that might be something well thought out for weight distribution. Maybe having the battery too far outside or towards the end of the chassis, maybe there was a, an issue, you know, thinking about durability, less chance of impacts on the battery. Uh, maybe thinking about having the, the weight centered a little bit because batteries are heavy, heavy. So having it, you know, more towards the center of the car, that might be uh, the reason behind it. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. So that's probably why they did that. We do have an aluminum center diff whilst the armor is still running a plastic center diff. Um, that may not have anything to do with the um, chassis layout, but something worthwhile pointing out nonetheless. The, the um, servo, as you can see, is mounted kind of long ways with the chassis, but it's on a bit of an angle, it's not exactly straight. And then of course you have your receiver box over on this side, very nicely tucked away. It's actually not a bad design overall. Uh, center diff, of course, we've got a sliding motor mount and the motor is over here, kind of, again, facing towards the center. Now, one thing you will notice is that the motor is definitely a lot more forward in the car as opposed to the armor car, where it's a lot further back. So there's quite a bit of difference there. The way that this car weight has been distributed, I think is going to play a part in the way that they handle differently as well. Aside from the shocks and the ge suspension geometry that we talked about and all that sort of stuff, there's obviously going to be slightly different handling characteristics between the two cars, purely based on just the overall chassis layout itself. So that pretty much sums it all up. I think I've covered pretty much everything I need to cover. I will say this though, I do like the fact that the um, battery tray is kind of raised off the, the chassis. This is something that I think I've pointed out before, um, but I'd like the fact that that's raised off the chassis because any debris or anything like that that's uh, uh, you know kind of getting in underneath the battery is going to fall straight out of the battery tray and not sit there uh, kind of rubbing against the battery, especially when you're using soft packs. So I do like uh, that the battery tray design as far as that aspect goes, just the base of it um, but of course the, uh, the the armor battery tray can house much bigger batteries as well provided of course you can fit them under the body uh, that being said this is the same battery tray being used in in the other monster trucks that they have in their line in the other cars so uh, body fitment is not so much an issue with those vehicles because the body sits up a lot higher uh, so that pretty much sums up everything that I think I need to cover on the uh, on this subject and on these cars. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Uh, if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. There's lots more content coming up. And of course, check out the video description for uh, links to all my socials. And of course, links to more information on uh, pretty much all the cars that you see here in this video today. Thank you again for watching and I'll speak to you all next time.